only one of them can be the victor in this best of three. The first map is a star station and spawning to the bottom left hand corner. Ladies and gentlemen, is the blue Zerg player playing for Axiom Gaming. It is none. Oh, pardon me. Playing for what? Team Liquid. I was on the wrong player's vision, and I totally blame Nick. We have the little one, T L O. And his opponent is going to be the Red Terran in the top right position. Definitely following the correct observer this time around. He plays for Axiom, one of possibly one of the friendliest uh, Korean players I've ever met. Absolute legend. But now he needs to get going and focus because he's up against some stiff competition. It is hard. Now, cross spawns, are we going to be seeing, because it's Star Station, some kind of Reaper play out of heart? I reckon it's pretty likely. Yeah, I think um, this map in particular, you can see there's an awful... I mean, we've harped it to death, of course, but Star Station no longer in the map pool, so it's possible that some of our newer viewers might not have even played on it just yet. A massive amount of cliff space on the edges of the base here at Star Station. You can see all the way along from the top to around the right-hand side of TLO's base, and as a direct result of that, it means um, Reapers just have an awfully large number of entry points. It's difficult for Queens to cover everything. So it's easy for them to be able to get that scouting information in the early game. Now, that all comes down to, though, really what the Reapers are going to be used for. Because there are builds where you get a lot more than, say, just one or two Reapers out and try and deal a lot of damage. But the thing to remember as well is that it's not just killing drones that can really affect a Zerg's economy. If you pick off a good number of Zerglings and force more out, you're effectively lowering the Zerg's drone count from what they'd want it to be through that harassment, which is always a nice little way to go. But anyway... This is all looking very standard, I'd say, at the moment, Jorasa. Probably just going to be a command center following off this for Heart and TLO, just trying not to lose too much to Reapers. Yep, that's exactly right. I uh, don't really think there's too much to um, really write home about at this stage of the game. Both of these players very confident in their abilities, and it that's the kind of... Uh, that is really, to be honest, the kind of mindset of player where when you get two of them going up against each other, you do naturally see situations where you... They just don't try and go for the early game cheeses. They're not doing anything too drastic. They're macroing up. They're playing the normal kind of poking and prodding against each other, um, scouting around, seeing if they can pick off a unit here and there. But really, the main action is going to come down to maneuvering and tech choices coming down in the mid game. And uh, yeah, I, I, that's really all I have to say on that. I mean, Hart, tremendously good player, TLO, seasoned veteran uh, to DreamHack and the UK scene. So. Looking forward to seeing what they bring us. Well, the second Reaper is on its way, or was on its way across the map. It's been pulled back now. It sees a fair few Zerglings making their way over. This is just the sort of thing where, with two Reapers, you've got to be doing a little bit of damage. You've got to be forcing more Zerglings so you keep the drone count slightly lower because you have invested more resources in getting them out. But Hart is playing some great micro here. We'll pick off two more Lings, and generally he's looking fairly happy. Yeah, those two Lings uh, are basically there to stop the Reapers getting into the mineral line to make sure the Queen can get there on time. Which is why uh, you don't see... Uh, ooh, very nice! Picking off an SCV there at the natural expansion is TLO, so returning the favor and being very slightly annoying as well because the command center was being built on the low ground by Hark. Maybe a little bit of overconfidence there. Could have built it on the high ground and floated it over. As it stands, he's actually going to end up delaying that CC by quite a lot. Now... Getting this sort of small delay down is, is nice. It's not going to be changing the game by a huge margin, but it is enough just to potentially game throw paused. one of these players off their margin a little bit. Hard having a quick pause, so this gives us time to reflect on really what we've seen so far. Yeah, it, it definitely does. I mean, the the game's open fairly standard so far, Maddles. Uh, two Reapers rather than one, uh, just in case we can see a little bit of damage done uh, early on by Hart here. And TLO managing to delay the command center at the natural by just a little bit, but otherwise both players really just getting up to what their game plan would have been. Now, we are back in this. The Rotoron has come down. I like the fact that just a few, or oh, okay, not a few, six <laughs> roaches now on <laughs> their way out. <laughs> Just a few, a lot of roaches. Um, and TLO can now just go and try and pressure on a bit. Six roaches right. is enough to defend with, obviously, but probably a few over what you'd usually get. But definitely means these Hellions and anything of that such, the kind of two Reaper for Hellion play won't be effective against TLO now. 
It's definitely not a three roach rush, mate. Are we <laughs> maybe expecting that in some of the other games we cast? Definitely not here. So we're going to see those roaches make their way to the front of the base. The Reaper is just going to continue to be annoying for Hart. And TLO, he's actually moving out across the map with these roaches. And crucially, I think the Hellions actually spotted that as well. So now, is Hart going to go back and defend? Or is he going to try and get some more damage? And it looks like he wants to head home. He is getting two Widow Mines out though, and that Banshee, so really these Roaches aren't going to be too scary to him because he can he can definitely deal with those fairly quickly. So this is all well and good, Tielo buying himself some time, but what he really needs to see is that Banshee so he can throw down support coolers just be a little bit defensive in case there's Blink, because of course if he sees the Banshee, he has no way of knowing... Sorry, I said Blink, Cloak. Um, he needs a yep. way to know whether there's Cloak or not. Um, and until he does know that, he's going to want to play a defensive and get a support cooler burrowing the Widow Mine as well on the high ground uh, so that he might be able to catch the Roaches on Retreat. Notice that the Hellions and Banshee, uh, sorry, the Hellions and Reapers, by the way, are on the right-hand side as well, possibly goading out some fire from the Roaches to allow the Widow Mine to... Oh, very nice play coming out of there from Hart, really planning the latter stages of this engagement, and all of a sudden... Ooh, did manage to get the Supply Deeper to burn down, and Tila managed to sneak in a couple of work kills, five total so far, but these Roaches just got absolutely toasted. I'd say it was worth it though. Roaches, put it maybe didn't trade cost effectively, but getting those five work kills, that straight away 250 minerals, plus the supply depot, another 100. Mm -hmm. But what it did do was reveal that the Banshee was there, allowing Spore Callers yes. to come down, guaranteeing no damage to be done, and also stopped any push coming from the Reapers or the Hellions. As of yet, buying in more time, meaning his drone counts higher, and altogether is just a bit happier. No, you're exactly right. Um, it's worth pointing out there that from the moment the TLO noticed that, hang on a second, I know these roaches aren't going to survive, there is the Banshee there, maximizing the damage from that point onwards was something he did very, very well throughout that engagement. Now, what we really need to see now, ideally, is just a nice little bit of added defense from TLO. And ideally, TLO getting himself into the sort of spot where actually it's mid-game, where that spy is done, where the upgrades are coming through, where he's got that third base secured. That's the things that he needs to do in the next kind of three minutes or so to get himself into a good spot. And he is going about all those right along the path that he wanted to. Managing to uh, just kill off that creep room there that seems to be in the way of that hatch. The Reaper is going to spot that the hatchery has gone down. Uh, we've got one one about halfway done for TLO. Similar kind of timing to Stim on the other side. Don't really anticipate any sort of crazy time moving out across the map just yet, since we are going to want to wait for a lot of those mutilists to come out. In the meantime, Hart, though, he's going to be getting double engineering bay. Literally just put his second one down as we speak. And uh, he's going to be focusing, uh, both players really, focusing more on the long term here. So I'm not really expecting too much action in the next couple of minutes. No, and it would make sense for there not to be anything really happening. The next big thing is that third CC will need to float its way down in order to come and take the third base for Hart. Once he gets that, he's going to be a lot happier. Stim, of course, is also finishing up. So there could be a timing with the plus one, with the two medevacs and some infantry. Although, just because there's been a commitment to the Banshee, that push will be a bit later. There's not that much in terms of Marines and Marauders out yet, so it's a much smaller push than you usually expect here. A little bit, um, really sort of small kind of things here, but I love the fact that TLO is spreading creep to the left-hand side of his third base. He knows that the third base is a little bit difficult, um, very annoying at times to keep a hold of on Star Station, so he wants to make sure that any potential drops that sneak in through the left of the map, he has as much notice of them as possible. I, I really like that. But unfortunately, the creatures to the right are getting taken out now with a great scan from Hart, able to really force back that creep. And the thing is, Tilo now just needs to make sure that he deals with as much of this army as he can. The Marines are going to be very scary to those mutilists. And without the Bane Lane done, taking it out could be quite challenging. Yeah, he needs to, uh, to uh, either wait for the Bailey Nest to get a decent amount of roaches, to be perfectly honest. And, ooh, one of the medevacs actually getting caught just as it goes onto the high ground. And that's actually going to mean that the Muta should be able to finish this off, and they will indeed. Managing to kill off the third base, though, is hard, so it wasn't all for naught there. If we take a look at the worker supply, it's 57 to 61 in TLO's favor. So with mules as well, Hart's doing okay. Going to be rebuilding his third base straight away. And now... Uh, TLO is going to want to think about a counterattack against the third of Heart because otherwise he's going to just be squeezing out a long-term macro lead. I 100% agree that that was a bit of a... It was a nice pick-off there by TLO, but that third going down probably mm. didn't warrant the expense. And that's forcing TLO to double expand because he knows his opponent's already got his third up, so he needs to stay a base up. He's down a little bit in terms of income just by not having good saturation across the different bases. And he's got to recover from that. The 2-2 two, two upgrades will help because he's keeping an upgrade lead. But will it be enough? That's what we're going to see over the next few minutes. 
Yeah, the timing on the bailings there really wasn't conducive to his efforts to keep a hold of that third base. Although, um, getting a couple of roaches out could have helped as well, just not quite as much. Good, well, uh, very good play there coming out from Hart as the muters now from TLO trying to get a word in sideways at the third base, unable to do so on this occasion. And ergo, the double expand, not too bad a strategy, but there is a small group of Marines, a little bit of a drop coming down here that might try and say no to that fourth. So, that fourth wants to get picked off. If Hart can get that, he's definitely going to be in a nice spot because at the very best, he'll manage to stay on equal bases. But TLO, with 2-2 on its way, is getting in a nice spot. But he needs that bathing speed. And also, he's got to identify the tanks here. I don't think he's seen them yet. And tank play is a lot less common in the current meta. Uh, it is, actually. You tend to see an awful lot more Widow Mines. But I I'm, a, I'm a fan of keeping tanks... Uh, behind my marines generally, even if it's just a couple to complement Widow Mines, you of course know that, Mados. I still quite like my Siege Tanks, and it's good to see uh, players mixing in one or two, because I, I think really the splash damage from those Siege Tanks, the consistent splash damage, if a battle lasts longer than a few seconds, it, it's just generally worth it, especially in wide open places where it's very easy for the Zerg player to really kind of catch you out if they get in a good position. Now, we are seeing some great scans coming down here from Hart. He's just applying a lot of pressure all throughout, and TLO is being forced to try and defend everywhere at once. The one thing I would say about Hart's army is while it's spread, it looks quite scary, but there isn't too much there, and that's allowing TLO to just start Ooh. rolling in. The bailings don't get the greatest hit, but there's another round of them coming through behind it. The tanks going down very quickly, and without those, suddenly there's no support, and TLO cleans it up. Now, I want to say something very important here, which is, I love the fact that the siege tanks are in the back because they provide that extra little bit of security uh, in the event of a flank. But you still have to have the Widow Mines in the front of that army as well. Otherwise, you just get situations like just now where TLO felt completely comfortable just to waltz straight in and say, well, thank you very much. I pick off these tanks and therefore I win. If there were a couple of Widow Mines with the army and they were slightly further behind and they were planted there, TLO would have to think much more carefully before diving in like that. A couple of Widow Mines are coming in, they're going to get picked off though. Unfortunately, no Overseers with this army. Medivac count ridiculously low throughout, and that's because the Mutalist is doing such a good job of cleaning this up. But what I do like is Hart is pushing one way and then the other side of this central circle, meaning that he's able to harass both the 4th and 5th simultaneously, and really try and spread TLO thin. And I believe this hatchery is going to get picked off here. TLO doesn't really have units that can come back in time, so two medevacs with this as well. He will be able to pick up and simply head on home. Nice work there from Hart. TLO trying to quarter him with these mutas, and uh, I think if there's another medevac boost at some point soon, no, he's actually just going to drop the units and fight straight up, try and pick off as much as he can. These medevacs are almost certainly going to go... Oh, wow! The Mutas could have target fired the medevac, managing to get it anyway though, and the Lynx will clean the rest up on that ledge. So, where do you go from here as Hart? He's kind of... I get the impression that he's just constantly throwing units, and TLO is dealing with it time and time again. Hart needs to switch things up a little bit, and try and find a nice approach to actually knock TLO off his path. Because currently TLO, this entire game, has only lost three drones. He's had such a great economy, and to be able to pump units, he's massively ahead in supply. There needs to be a good trade for Hart and Sue. And, uh, well, TLO at the moment, he's doing a good job of kind of dictating where and when the engagements are going to be. Notice the Widow Mines haven't played a big part in this engagement right now. Uh, there are no more siege tanks trying to move out across the map, so Hart deciding they're no longer worth his investment. He's going to load up a double drop, but really TLO, after that initial pressure from Hart, is really starting to dictate the pace. And I feel that Hart's just very uncomfortable with that. He's staying rather cagey uh, with his units. The Lings and Banelings are moving away, not wanting to fully engage this army yet, and in the meantime, we have the Mutalist coming in to try and absolutely ravage this economy. And this SCV line is looking very painful right now. Number of workers killed in this game. I almost don't want to know. 26 and counting. I thought it'd be more than that myself, but it's still, the Mutalists are just having such commanding influence on the positioning of everything. It's preventing Hart from being able to move out too much. It's preventing Hart from being able to drop. And that's where Willy TLO taking a good amount of control. Well, here comes the drop in the natural expansion. Now we can see a few Marines around the Spire actually might try and take that out. And he's dropping the rest of his units inside the main as well. That's a lot of Marines. He has to be very, very careful with that. And the Mute is coming on. They're going to actually get a counter attack at the third base location. I think they might be able to take this on, but he moves off into the main anyway. The drops in the main and natural of TLO still going strong. The one in the natural finally getting picked off, and the one in the main saved and in the bottom left-hand corner for uh, the use later. 
Now I just want to talk a little bit about their income. TLO mining between 1,500 more minerals a minute and also double the gas. That is a mm. huge advantage and it's been like that for what seems like an eternity. It's allowing TLO to trade even cost ineffectively and still be in a really good spot. But the joke is, he's actually losing less resources than Hart is, putting him in an amazing spot overall this game. The difference though, 3-3 three, three about to kick in for Hart. Now remember, um, we were talking about Hive timings a little bit earlier on where there was a previous game uh, where basically Hive starts at about 21 minutes and they just don't have time for transition while well, TLO is about to finish his Ultralisk Cavern at the same time, continuing to build more Mutalisks as well and staying on top of his upgrades. He's going to be able to restrict Hart's movement uh, because Hart knows as soon as he moves out with a sizable force, he needs to make sure he has enough at home to stop his bases from being absolutely torn apart by those mutas. And that really is the challenge our Terran player faces right now. And that's primarily, I think, why he's a bit uncomfortable. So, as this stands, what can we do, really, if we were in Hart's position? He's got to try and shut down one of these bases, either the fourth or the fifth, preferably both, to be in a good spot. 3-3 three, three upgrades do give him a window of opportunity where things could go very nicely for him, but he's got to be so cautious when he moves forward, scanning, making sure there's no burrow bailings or anything like that, but already, bailings and roaches streaming forward. Hart, not in the worst spot, but does he have enough stuff? Uh, well, there are a lot of muters to flank this army here, to be honest. The Roaches and Zerglings aren't dying quite as fast as uh, maybe Hart would like, but TLO coming in with reinforcements once again. There is still an undetonated Widow Mine on the right, but one undetonated Mine is not going to help here, and TLO will be able to force the Terran army back. Hart, once again, having to head on home. He's down to 130 supply versus the 155 of our Team Liquid Zerg. Credit to team, sorry, credit to Hart though. He's managed to knock TLO's work account down a bit, down to 63, but that actually frees up some supply for both Vipers and also Ultralisks to start hitting the field. The 3-3 three, three upgrades and Kindness Plating all on their way as well. But that upgrade lead really giving Hart a small window of opportunity. Yeah, TLO at the moment really just wants to wait until he has a decent number of Ultralists out so that he can simply engage this army head on and maybe come in from the flank. The Mutas though, going up north, he's going to try and come from behind and kill as many of these medevacs as he possibly can. Really nice flank there from TLO and all of the medevacs that were with this army have gone down. That is a huge win for him. Total number of medevacs on the field medals? One. Uno. One medevac at 24 minutes is probably not ideal. Mm, pick up seven cards. Not going to be a good situation for Hart there. And, uh, well, I mean, TLO, now with the Vipers gaining energy, now with some Ultralisks out as well, he he's looking more and more comfortable as the game progresses, and he's even getting Pathogen Glance, so that's going to help his Ultras quite a lot, being able to keep that bio in place if this game goes any further. He's just doing a tremendous job. I also really like the Vipers. Those blinding clouds just mean that if you cast them behind where, well, where the infantry wants to retreat to, then then really negated any damage. The stutter step micro, but nice by Hart coming down here, picking off the fifth base. That's going to be a little bit frustrating for Tielo. Yeah, it, um, a little bit frustrating is probably an understatement here because if this base over to the 4 o'clock position get picked off as well, this drop is going to be worth its weight in gold and that might actually prompt TLO to do something offensive. The thing is, he might very well just have enough stuff to do that right now. We can see a couple of mutilists, ooh, getting caught out by a widow mine. They're not exactly dying off, but uh, taking a reasonable amount of damage at the 12 o'clock base. The, it's worth knowing the Mutalis count has decreased significantly. And one of the main reasons for that, and why TLO not too worried, is because he's transitioning out of the Mutalis phase. He's trying to get more Ultras and more Infestors down in order to really engage head on. Hart hasn't seen the 4 o'clock base. The Medivac was sat there for so long, but he just quite doesn't see the creep. So uh, that's going to get away with it for now. We have a massive engagement going on here near the middle of the map. Though fantastic fungal growths coupled with the Ultralis mean that this gets cleaned up. And now the 12 o'clock base could be under attack. Both sides scrambling to get their army there ASAP. But it looks like TLO deciding now is not the best time. A drop coming into the main. A good fungal on most of the units, but he's going to have to get more stuff there. Yeah, he needs a lot more units in order to defend that. We do have infantry still moving around the top. Half really battling his way in this game now. He's only 10 workers behind and is ahead in supply. TLO starting to feel a slight slip, in my opinion. Needs to make sure that he stays on top of this multi prong attack. Now the armies are just so much more dangerous. That's right, Hart now moving on to creep with some infantry. TLO still defending at that fourth base location. He's got that four o'clock base though, rather tidied up at the moment and uh, Hart just continuing to apply more and more pressure. TLO really 
needs a couple of fantastic fungal growth to be on it from those investors from earlier to stop that from happening. We have a couple going down on the Sami, but the majority still able to kite back. Uh, haven't got investors at the back, still with energy. It doesn't look like there are any fungals left. And this is not looking good for TLO now. Hard just bringing in the vice. GG is cooled and Hart takes game number one in what was an absolutely spectacular opening game. Now